Well, hello and welcome back, oh, my hi. friends. Dr. Ken Berry, family physician here with my lovely assistant, wife, manager, boss, partner, Nisha Salas Berry. Hey, y'all. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. It's officially Christmas now, as far as I'm concerned. And if any of you guys fell off the horse over the Thanksgiving, horse. Just forgive yourself, act like it never happened, and get started again tomorrow. Throw out the rest of those leftovers you know you shouldn't even put in the fridge. Tomorrow's a new day. It's okay. There. Now. Is that How better? you doing? I'm ready to get back to my home in the middle of nowhere. I've had enough of the city for... We need to get back home to Greenbow, Alabama. Yep. What movie is that from? I'm so ready. Interesting shirt, Dr. Berry. Thank you so much. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I like it. I like it. Nisha likes it. Therefore, that's all the information I need. <laughs> James in California says, hit the like button. I, I think that's a great idea. Thank you, James. Hope everybody's doing well and didn't ingest too many unnecessary carbohydrates over Thanksgiving. Now it is officially Christmas season. You can part, start putting the Christmas crap out. It's happening as we speak. Oh, God. I'm going to get home and the house is going to be decked to the halls. I've already been listening to Christmas music. Getting she in has. that spirit. She has. Yeah. She's going to be recording some more Christmas music soon, maybe. <laughs> Someone said, sup, meat pimps. <laughs> That's right. That's funny. That's right. I've heard that one meat before. Pimps. That's pretty good. I love it. I love it. So, oh, wait, wait, wait. Jujubi says, tomorrow is Lily's ninth birthday. Can you shout her out? She's singing Beef Butter Bacon and Eggs. Happy oh, birthday. Oh, Lily. Hey, Lily. Happy birthday. Have a wonderful day. Do you know the Spanish happy birthday? Feliz cumpleaños? Ah, T. Is that right? I don't know. I'm There's a bunch Spanish. of different I got to learn it. Where are you guys watching from? What city? What state? What country? Put it in the comments right now. We have people from all over the world watching right now. And to prove it, I need your location in the comments, please. And you can also say who you're cheering for Yeah. in the FIFA World Cup. Are you guys Cup. watching the, the World Cup, the soccer? We watched today. We watched. Uh, We're trying to learn soccer. Portugal and Uruguay. It was a good game. We're rednecks, and so soccer doesn't come naturally Well, it has to us. come to Nashville. We now have a soccer team, and so I am interested in soccer. I don't know that much about it but i want to so we're learning the u.s plays iran tomorrow at 1 p.m central we're going to try to catch that unless we're traveling so yeah. we'll see how it goes i can watch it on my phone i'm playing uh, on true, it true true true, <laughs> true. true. I'm gonna be that person <laughs> All right. we're gonna be hanging out with you for the next hour answering every single question that we possibly can so if you've got questions about a low carb diet, a banting diet, a keto diet, a ketovore diet, a carnivore diet, intermittent fasting, medical conditions. <laughs> Lori said, heck with you. I'm saying hi to Granny Berry. Hey, <laughs> Granny Berry. We're not there yet. Hang she's, on. She's the coolest one. <clears throat> that's for sure. Yeah, she is pretty cool. All right. What's going on, woman? Do you have any announcements? <clears throat> not really. I'm super excited. Uh, for things I have planned in the group, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, we've got a lot of people watching from so a lot of them. We got, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Canada. Canada, that's it. Saskatoon. Right. Costa Rica. Saskatoon. Hey, I'm going to be down there, Vicky, before long. Oh, uh, yeah. Somebody said, I'm not watching soccer. Go Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> that used to be my standard answer. Yeah. So if it was go Cowboys. Yeah. I don't used to not hate, be, don't I thought hate. soccer was boring, and now I'm really into yeah. it. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Times are a changing. Hard to believe Nisha gave birth a few months ago. Right. Oh, she said six months ago. Five months. Five no, months four. Ago. Four and a half months four ago. Four and a half months ago. Yeah. yeah. She just turned four But months it is hard months. to believe. It is, believe me. Body is huge, too. All right, let's take some questions. Yes, please. Yes, let's do it. Jan says, what is the Randall cycle and oxalate dumping? So I have a video on this channel about the Randall cycle with uh, Bart K that you can check out after this live. We And it's a very complicated topic, and it's uh, a topic that's still up for debate as to its relative importance, depending on who you listen to and who you talk to. Uh, but Bart K and I really tried to simplify it as much as we possibly could. But uh, disclaimer, it's still not really simple. It's kind of complicated. 
John wants to know how much fiber do you need on a carnivore diet? Great question, John. You need zero grams of fiber every each and every day, without exception. Um, <clears throat> there's never been a, a proven need for fiber in the human diets. And so uh, that's why many carnivores have been eating car eat only meat and eggs for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And their, their health is pristine. Their colon health is great. Their poops are great. They have no problems with anything like that. They, they have no increase in heart disease or anything else, even though they eat a zero fiber diet. So evidently there's no need for fiber in the human diet. Marnie, I'm 60, but I want to be nature when I grow up. Thanks, Barry, for all you do. Uh, I love you, Marnie. Marnie. Thank you, Marnie. Uh, this is funny. Alex says, saw your interview with Saladino. What are you current, currently eating? Any fruit? I don't know why people keep asking you if you started eating fruit. No, <laughs> no, I'm not eating any fruit. And Alex, I, I'm, I'm working on a video right now that I'm going to go into detail as to why I'm not eating fruit. It has to do with glycation. And I'm going to do a video all about that in, in the next week or so. Julie says, what is the best diet for fatty liver and to lose weight? It's a great question, Julie. I've got several videos on this channel about how you can reverse fatty liver within three weeks to six months. And uh, the answer is a keto diet or a ketovore diet or a carnivore diet. Any of those diets will reverse your fatty liver. If your fatty liver is caused from eating too many carbohydrates and not from drinking too much alcohol. If you're drinking too much alcohol and you have fatty liver, then you need to stop drinking. JD Morgan, I need your help. Have gout for three weeks and not it's not going away. I've been carnivore for six months, so I'm not eating carbs. Been wearing the boot. It's still too painful to walk on. What can I do to get rid yeah, of Yeah, JD, that? it's time to go see your doctor. Uh, gout typically, even if untreated, typically won't last for three solid weeks. Uh, you may have a, an undiagnosed stress fracture or something else going on with your foot. You need to go to the doctor and get an x-ray. Mm -hmm. Good question. Stephen, Stephen. <laughs> hey, Dr. Barry, are there good studies on protein intake for people with CKD, not diabetic, not obese, 27 years old, and otherwise healthy and fit? Yeah, so there are many studies that show a very close linking between CKD progression and eating too many carbohydrates, uh, thus giving you hyperinsulinemia and hyperglycemia. So there is no study showing that eating uh, a protein that has adequate protein, a diet that has adequate protein is going to harm your kidneys at all. I actually have a video on this channel about CKD that you can check out. Someone has taken your name, proper human diet. <laughs> Do you think carnivore diet will help my OCD? I think that there's a very good chance you're going to notice that your OCD symptoms get less severe to some degree. Some people's OCD seemingly goes into remission on a carnivore diet. Other people say, no, it's 20%, 30%, 50% better. Jerry, all I eat is beef. I feel amazing, yet it's recommended we take supplements. I'm 30 pounds down and three weeks. So wow. my recommendation currently is, is that you need to be eating some kind of liver once or twice a week, and that's going to give you any remaining supplementation that you might need. However, there are many carnivores who have eaten only ribeye and hamburger for over 10 years and have developed no vitamin or mineral deficiencies whatsoever. So uh, uh, beef's pretty darn nutrient dense, but try to add some liver at least once a week. A dink. <laughs> I went carnivore. Now what question? shall yeah. I do with my vast vegetable garden next year? So if you have chickens, you can give it to your chickens mm -hmm. uh, or any other animals that eat vegetables and stuff like that. Yep. Uh, what else can you can donate it to uh, friends and family? Mm -hmm. But the vast majority, and we actually grow a very small raised bed vegetable garden every year. And this last year, uh, I grew Nisha tomatoes and peppers and cilantro and onion and garlic. And we wound up, she wouldn't, she had no taste for it. She didn't eat it at all. And we turned all of the vegetables in the garden into eggs. You know how we did that? We let the chickens eat it. And so we turned our garden into eggs, which is, I think, a great way to do it. Uh, we actually have a farm channel. You may not know that. It's called OB Farms. Uh, stands for Oxford. That's her grandfather who uh, gifted the farm to her when she when he went to heaven. And Barry, OB Farms. And we actually document silliness like turning your garden into eggs if you are not in the mood to eat vegetables. Sometimes I do. But I would all of you guys, I want you to keep growing the vegetables and the herbs. 
because it's good practice. yeah, it's good practice, and they're also excellent starvation foods. Should the trucks ever stop running, you've got you know how to grow some food. Becky really likes to help in the garden. Too. He loves it. Tina, how do I add more fat? Should I use Carb Manager to track to get an eighty twenty? It appears <clears> I'm living with picos and it was never diagnosed. So you might need to track for a few weeks um, just to, to kind of figure out what does 80-20 look like. I don't think anybody needs to track constantly forever, uh, but it might help you if, you're, if you don't know much about nutrition right now, Tina, and you're like, I don't even know how much fat's in an egg or how much protein. I think that might help you a lot. I think doing a, a 90 days of 80-20 carnivore might, might help you a lot. It definitely, it's not going to harm you in any way, but it might give you an answer that you've been looking for. Emily, any specific foods on carnivore to help ADHD? I'm wanting to stop taking five ants. So uh, there's nothing <clears throat> on a carnivore diet that you should add, but there's definitely many things that you should subtract, which is all the carbohydrates of any kind. A lot of people think, oh, I'm going to eat carnivore. And they don't really understand what that means. Carnivore doesn't mean, oh, I eat lots of meat, but also some rice and vegetables and fruit and honey and other stuff. That's not carnivore. That's an omnivore diet. That's a mixed diet. That's a paleo diet. It might still be healthy, but it might not give you the ADHD help that you want. You need to be 100% meat and eggs. That's what say, carnivore means. But make sure you're eating fatty cuts of meat and adding animal fats in, mm. and not eating chicken breast yes. and turkey and ground turkey and turkey bacon and the lean cuts. Stay away from those and make sure you're eating good fatty meats. And if you're cooking with fat, make sure they're animal meats. And that's going to help a lot for anybody yep. with mental um, issues. Or and also um, keep in mind, you, you need to wean down the bivance very slowly. It is very habit forming. Uh, some people would even say it's addictive. So wean it down very slowly, maybe need to with the help of your doctor. Yes, Nurse Cindy is a moderator now, and how lucky are, are we? Very lucky. She is the best. Thank you, Nurse Cindy, for being with us. JD, gout question continued. I had both an x ray and an MRI, no fracture or tendon tear. Could this be something a podiatrist is missing? Yep, almost certainly mm -hmm. that's exactly what it is, JD. And it may be something <clears throat> as simple as a severe case of tendonitis in a specific tendon that's just hurt, hurting like a mofo. Uh, it could, there's, I could just list thing after thing that it could be, but if you had an MRI, that's probably not going to miss a stress fracture and that's probably not going to miss a bone tumor, which is the other thing I was thinking about, but didn't say it out loud because I didn't want you to freak out and think, oh my God, I got cancer. But you definitely need to follow back up with the, the uh, podiatrist. And if you're not taking a round of low dose steroids, probably at this point, it, it sounds like you've suffered long enough. You probably need to do that, even though it's going to raise your blood sugar also being in constant pains, raising your blood sugar as well. Thank you, Dalton. Thanks, Bestie Dalton. says, I've been watching the OB Farms videos. <clears throat> We're, I haven't made any in a while. I've been a little negligent. There's probably, what, 20 videos on that channel? But when we get home, I'm, I'm going to try to step it up. Um, Michelle, any idea why oysters make me barf? I freaking love them, but I can no longer tolerate them. It's a new problem. Never had before PhD. Raw and baked both. Very can't odd. tolerate that is very strange. odd very odd I, I hope you can still enjoy other seafood uh oysters and mussels and other mollusks <laughs> and crustaceans are superfoods the small fish that are that are in the northern ocean are superfoods so it's just happened it's so, so weird really weird are you pregnant can be pregnant you i don't might, know how old you are that's you just be, like the first thing that it yeah, would actually be keto pregnant kind of that happens sense. yeah um you probably not. Thanks, John. Hey, thank John. You. Thank you. Uh, Karen, I have hypothyroidism and losing all of my once very thick hair. I'm six months on carnivore, taking Synthroid. Is there yeah. anything else I can do? Yeah. Go see a doctor who's going to give you a, a real thyroid replacement hormone and not fake Synthroid. Uh, you need Armor or Nature or WP or NP, or if you're in Canada, you need Urfa. Uh, Synthroid is fake T4. Real thyroid replacement hormone has real T0, T1, T2, T3, T4, T4, and calcitonin. And you need all those things. Also make sure on carnivore that you are eating until satiety. Do not be portion controlling uh, or that can, your, your hair is the least important protein that your body makes. And so if you're just, if you're cutting off before you're completely stuffed, then your body's not going to prioritize your hair. 
Jerry, can't stand the taste of liver. Could you recommend a multi-supplement to take in lieu of liver? Yeah. So Keto Chow has the daily mineral drops, which I'm a big fan of. I help them design that. That's going to get your minerals sorted. Uh, and that's the, most of the time, if you're eating a carnivore diet with plenty of meat, you're going to be getting all the vitamins you need, except for maybe vitamin D. So you get that from the sun. And then I've got a vitamin D rich foods video on this channel that you can check out and start eating those foods, or you can take a vitamin D supplement. Or you can order some Oregon ground beef, white oak pastures. Yes. Uh, it's linked in the description. You can order it from them. Yep. And it's ground beef with the organs mixed into it. You cannot really tell. It nope. does taste different, but like in a very good yep. way. It's very delicious. That's the best way I would say to do it. That way you are eating the liver, but it doesn't even feel like yep. you are. You can make my meatloaf recipe and you really can't taste it when you make the meatloaf recipe. Nope. Nope. Um, you can ask a local butcher to do it or you can get it from white oak pasture. But that, we got a link down in the show That notes. is the best way to do it and probably the most economical Yeah, way But I think it's 50% ground beef, 25% liver and 25 percent heart bet so good. you cannot tell it is delicioso that's spanish yeah <laughs> david thoughts on msg i add please give as much detail um don't add msg to your food yeah why well, <clears throat> you're eating real food that's not mm -mm. from a package no or a restaurant that. there should not be msg you do not have an msg deficiency so stop that I know it enhances the flavor of the food, but you can do that with other spices that don't have the potential um, side effects that MSG has. Stan, hey from the UK. Hey, are zero carb hot sauces okay on carnivore? Depends on who asks. For most people, I would say yes. For probably 80, 90% of people, yes, it's fine. Some people might get some inflammation from some of the ingredients. Yeah, we got two crazy ketos and Nurse Indy in here. Well, right? I and know. Mitzi and Marsha. I don't know. Is Kevin in here? And Paola? I haven't seen Kevin. We are both thankful. There's Mitzi. Thank you, Gail. Thankful and grateful. Hey, thanks, Gail. Okay. See, <laughs> I've been on the carnivore diet for two months and sometimes have severe indigestion. It feels like it's from the salt, but it could be something else, question mark. Yeah, there's nothing in a carnivore diet that's going to give you severe indigestion. If you keep having that, it's time to go see your doctor. All right. She says, I'm not pregnant. I'm 52. I have no 52-year-olds. That's why we said that. They got pregnant. You might want to get a test unless you After just, had, there's no chance. Way. Right. Yeah. yeah. Just, you know, but eating a proper human sense. diet will increase your odds of getting knocked up. Jason, hey, what did you mean when you said that high cholesterol is okay to have? I mean, exactly that. Uh, there's actually quite a bit of research that shows that the higher your total cholesterol is, the longer you live and the less your chances of getting cancer. So until further research comes out, I'm not convinced that having high cholesterol is in any way a danger to human health, heart health, or any other kind of health. John, I thought I would go back to eating carbs and I gained 80 pounds in eight months. Now I'm back on carnivore and I've lost 35 pounds and I feel great. I live in a jungle of vegetarians. Yeah. That's rough, man. But <coughs> good but, for you for getting right back on there. Yeah, absolutely. And you'll, you'll regain all the gains that you lost with your temporary indiscretion. Truth and justice. My latest vitamin D test showed my level was 86. My endocrinologist, uh, Hashimoto's and hypothyroid, told me to stop supplementing because that level is too high. This is dumb. The lab did not flag the result as high. It's not high. Anywhere between 50 and 100 is perfection. That's what you want. And really, the closer to 100 you can get it. If it's above 100, then that's high, but it's still not dangerous. It's not... You're not vitamin D toxic. There was just a news article in the British media about a man who had to be hospitalized because he overdosed on vitamin D. And he was taking like 80,000 units a day for months. But they don't tell you to way down in the bottom of the, the article that he was in the hospital overnight or two days and then he went home and he's totally fine. Nothing bad happened. Even from that, and his, his vitamin D level was like 800. And literally nothing bad happened to it. Give a shout out to Randy from right here in San Antonio, Texas. Carnivore since February down 50 pounds. Stopped five medications, including Celebrex. Huzzah. Huzzah. Randy Stout. Huzzah. And in case you guys don't know, we're currently in San Antonio, yes, Texas. This is right not now. Nisha's decor behind us. No. She would not do this. So, well, I mean, go. if I was having a mental breakdown, maybe. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Vin. 
farm, uh, been strict farm for 60 days, going to India for two weeks in a month. It's vegetarian mm -hmm. there, right? Uh, how and when to transition will go back to carnivore upon my return. Yeah. Uh, you can just start to slowly transition now and just include more whole vegetables in your diet. Now, there's no reason you need to be eating the rice and the bread and the, the potatoes and just the starchy, sugary junk. Uh, but just just to eat as much meat as you can and fill up the rest with whole vegetables till you get home. David wants to know, is the carnivore diet beef only or does it include other animal meats? For some people, it is beef only because that's where they feel their best. For some people, it's sheep and goat only because that's where they feel their, their most healthiest. Most people can include some chicken and pork and some duck and some... Um, I would say most carnivores are like 80% beef or other ruminant meats and then 20 percent fish yep. and chicken and eggs yep. you can do venison squirrel rabbit skunk possum yeah groundhog technically it includes any animal yeah any animal that's right uh nomadic grit what's the best diet mm. if you suffer from psoriasis good question i actually have a video about psoriasis on this channel nomadic grit that's going to help you understand so much that your doctor may not have helped you understand uh Carnivore is probably the quickest to, to reverse your psoriasis and make it go away, but keto works awesome as well. I saw, I don't know. Oh, there it is. Ha ha, how funny. I saw it on the screen and I found it. Betty wants to know when, what is the site where your January challenge will be held? So, so that's first, like, but wait, where? first of all, I want to ask a question. I want to know which way of eating all you guys are eating right now. Are you just low carb? Are you keto? Are you ketovore or are you carnivore or are you eating a lion diet right now? Tell me in the comments. And the reason that I asked that question is because Nisha has an announcement. <laughs> okay. Uh, so in January within Dr. Barry's Mighty Network, which you can find at drberry.com slash community. And you can sign up if you want to. If not, the time. But I'm running a ketovore challenge in the group. And I know ketovore when I started doing it was less popular. Now it's kind of popular. And I see a lot of people say I'm doing ketovore, but I'm not seeing results. And so I'm basically going to break down my rules to ketovore and how to make it most effective for you specifically. And then we're also going to continue on forward. If you want to stay in the group, we're going to continue forward to do a 90 day carnivore elimination diet. And then I'm going to walk you through that and how to reintroduce food. So that's going to, we're going to have a challenge from now until April, basically. But in January, it's going to be how to get your ketovore the way it needs to be for you specifically. So if you're interested in that, you can sign up. And you also get <coughs> access to everything else in the group, too. This is just a bonus, yeah. basically, that uh, I'm running separate from Dr. Berry. But it's within Dr. Berry's Mighty Network. So if you're already in the group, you'll get access to it, too. Uh, but yeah. drberry.com slash community and there's join. also a link that says join our private community in the show notes mm -hmm. that'll get you there yes. too so this would be perfect for somebody if they've been kind of low carb or lazy dirty keto and they really they know they need to tighten up and they need some accountability right so it's all encompassing i'm going to walk through how to get your macros exactly where you want them the point of keto or how to do it i don't want to say right as opposed to wrong but most effective because the um, keto bore, the way I do it and the way I built it is for way more than just cutting down your carbs. It's, yep. it's way more in depth than that. So, yeah, I can't. That's going to be exciting. I think there'll be a lot of interest in that. Yeah. Uh, John says, Thoughts on PPI pills? This is like Nexium, Prevacid, Prolisec. Uh, John, you don't want to take these medications long term uh, for more than a month. So, if you're currently having to do that, I've actually got a video, videos on this channel mm -hmm. about GERD, reflux, heartburn, and also just about the PPIs. So, please watch those videos and try your best to wean down and stop those medications. DK. DK. 90 days into Ketobor and all my blood work <clears throat> looks great now, except my small particle LDL is still a little high. My doc wants me on Crestor since I pulled at 500 CAC score before before yeah. changing my diet. So I think two options here for you that are both rational and logical. You could say, okay, doc, I'm go I'm going to compromise. I'm going to take mm -hmm. the lowest dose of Crestor that they make. I think that's a rational compromise. And I think also if you'd like to print off Dr. David Diamond's study that I talk about in my video a few videos back and say, doc, 
I don't think a statin is going to benefit me. Here's some research I've been reading. I'm not going to take a statin. I think both of those are rational and reasonable, but I do think you need to have this conversation with your doctor, both for your benefit and for your doctor's benefit as well. Let's just go with it. Bart says, eat me. <laughs> hey, Keto Sherry. Yes, I know, yes, Sherry. I know, I know, I know, I know. I promise. I'm getting your email from Neil and I'm going to get with you. Yep, we're yep. going to fix, fix it. it. I'm sorry so this happened sorry. Here. I don't know how it could be on our end, but we will try to figure yeah, it out. We have already been working on this, Sherry. Don't <laughs> worry. We got you. Yes. <laughs> the minute I read her name, I was like, oh, this is about that thing, isn't it? Sorry. <clears throat> uh, Dalton. Hey, doc, I have AFib. Would I benefit from the carnivore? Mostly meat diet. Yes. I'm 21 years old. My doctor freaks with my blood pressure. Is high. And your doctor should freak when your blood pressure is high. But the way you're going to lower your blood pressure, I've got videos on this channel about that, is by eating a very, very low carbohydrate diet. Also, your AFib is intimately related with hyperinsulinemia and chronic inappropriate inflammation, both of which get better on a real whole food keto diet or ketovore or carnivore diet. So if you're like, dude, I could eat meat and eggs all the time and be happy. 100% it's going to help your blood pressure go back closer to normal. And it's also going to help your AFib flare up less often. Mike says, Nisha can sing. 100%. Have you guys seen Thank her sing? <clears throat> Heard her sing, I guess. Well, yeah. yes. Yeah, so <clears throat> she also has a singing channel. What's it called? Nisha Sings. Yeah, she Super can sing. Original. She can sing. Yeah, I'm actually going to be doing, I'm going to try to do two new songs for Christmas this year. I didn't get to do any last year. I was pregnant and uh, a little out of my element <laughs> yeah. last year. Yeah. I'm doing two this year. So if you want to go subscribe to that, if you want to listen to me sing. The first time I ever heard her sing in public, it made me cry. And I also thought, you know, I might marry this chick. When did you hear me sing the first time? Mm, I'm not going to tell you. Oh, gosh. Hey, Sunshine, New York feet and body always cold. Do you think it has to do with my thyroid? Yes. Uh, iodine, probably you're deficient in iodine. Uh, we've got videos on my channel and on Nisha's channel about the benefits of getting enough iodine in your diet. You can supplement the Keto Child Daily Minerals has iodine in it, or you can use something like Lugol's 2% Drops. Uh, then also I've got a video about iodine-rich food, but you've got to get enough iodine every day or you will have cold hands and feet. Thanks so much, Christian. Hey, thanks. All right. Terry says, can I stand butter? I know it's taste and texture thing. Any other way to get in good yeah. fat? Oh, plenty of other ways. Yeah, yeah absolutely. What's some ways? Bacon fat for one. Mm, bacon <laughs> That's grease. my fat of choice. Yes. Uh, beef tallow, yes. if, you, if you buy it in a glass jar. Um, Epic makes some. Yep. Carnival Chris makes some now. It's very mild. No real smell to it. And you can cook very high temp with uh, mm. bacon grease or with beef tallow. You can also use duck fat, duck fat. or bison goose fat, fat or bison fat. fat. There's, fat. Yeah, and great. so any yeah. animal fat, Terry, it doesn't have to be butter. I'm sad that you hate butter, but we can still be Have friends. you tried um, some like Amish butter? Because it's, <gasps> it's different. So you might actually enjoy it. Amish butter just hits different. It does. Uh Delusis, can you recommend a doctor in Nashville that practices like you do? So I know a, a nurse practitioner in Dixon, Tennessee. She's very close to Nashville. Whose name is Amanda Decker. You can do an internet search for her and find her. It's like a she 10 does, minutes. She is 15. focused on weight loss. Yeah. She's, she's not, not just, she's trying not to do primary care, just weight loss. So if you're overweight at all, you can go see Amanda Decker in Dixon, Tennessee. Um, if you have thyroid issues, Danny Williams is a nurse practitioner midwife, but her focus is thyroid health. Yes. That's who I go to. Even though I'm married to him, I like to have my own provider. And you is, should. Who is unbiased and not married to me. You should never <laughs> let your husband mechanic fix your car. And you should never let your doctor husband be your doctor. You need your own. It gives me health. great advice, but I, I like and also she validates that I'm doing the right thing because obviously he's going to say I'm doing the right thing. But even she who promotes a paleo protocol can't argue with my results. And she's yeah. like, I mean, Hey, it's obviously working. Yep. What's her name again? Danny with a I. D -A -N -I, D -A -N -I mm -hmm. Williams. She's in Brentwood, Tennessee. Hey, Amanda. Well, what how's is it going? Huzzah? Uh, we just say that. <laughs> huzzah is a kind of an exclamation of joy that used to be used back a long time ago, back in the olden days, as Beckett would say. Yes. When something good happened, you would say, Huzzah! huzzah! And I have been saying that, and then he picked it up, and so now 
We both See? Mad. It's kept here. Here's where it comes from. I'm a Renaissance Fair weirdo. I've been going since I was 14 years old, and that's what they say at the Renaissance Fair. And I just picked it up and I've said it ever since. You usually drink right after you say huzzah. And that's huzzah! And then you uh, drink. John Koloff says, Dr. Barry, I love your shirt. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, let's see. Yeah, let's get that one. Him? Him? Collision? A1C of 9.5. He devore for nine months. Did you mean he devore? A1C is now 5.4. Huzzah! So all you guys with a high A1C, do you see what happened to, to PIM collision? From nine and a half down to 5.4. I think endocrinologist is what he meant to say. Wants me to stay on metformin. Yeah, so that that's a good. So any of you necessary. guys who are on metformin or glucophage or berberine, once your A1C becomes 5.6 or less, you don't need that anymore because you now have a normal A1C. You've completely reversed your type 2 diabetes and your pre-diabetes. Well done, PIM Collision. Well done. AOA will carnivore help with GBF? Maybe, um, maybe, maybe, maybe not. That one's That's a little more complicated. I think it can't hurt anything. That, 100%. That's I, I totally agree with that. Um, yeah. The, from the <clears> research <throat> that I have found, the best thing is probiotics, prebiotics, and I don't even know if that really... Yeah, yeah. Uh, GBF. Now, I, if you mean Guillain Barre oh, syndrome, oh, G okay, that's a different. But GBS. if you mean GBS, as in the like, you got tested by your obstetrician yeah. and you're GBS There's positive. Uh, yeah, then pro probiotics and and maybe fermented food might help a little they bit. They probably Definitely mean Guillain Barre, lowering the carbs. But Guillain Barre, that's a booger. Once you get that, the damage is kind of done. You just got to wait to heal. But so, definitely, you don't want to be eating a high carb inflammatory diet. That's probably going to make it take longer. Yeah. Thank you, Gerald Fig. There's so many things in medicine that that the abbreviations can That's mean ten so different similar. things. Yeah. yeah, it's frustrating. M O Mo. Is it safe to do keto or carnivore with heart disease? I have a CAC of 130. Yes. Started keto in September. Lost 13 pounds. I feel great. But is it okay to do? 100% great to do and healthy to do, and will stop the progression of your heart disease. OK, the calcium a coronary artery calcium score shows how much calcium is built up in the plaques in your arteries. That's actually more stable than having soft plaque. And so you want all of your soft plaque to go ahead and calcify because the calcified plaques almost never lead to a heart attack. So, yes, keto carnivore, that needs to be your goal. Dewan, antibiotic for SIBO colitis or carnivore through till improvement. Antibiotics sound scary. Yeah, so antibiotics tend to, they might improve the symptoms of colitis temporarily or SIBO temporarily. But if you adopt a carnivore diet or even a ketivore diet, the SIBO or the colitis is going to be gone in a few weeks to most a month. I would, I, unless you're having severe like hospitalizable symptoms from the colitis, I would just I would just go carnivore and be strict carnivore mm -hmm. and, and it will, it'll be gone in a few days or a few weeks. I just want to say thank you <coughs> to those of you who are still tuning in to Monday Night Live yeah. during the holidays because we have a lot of drop off during this time of year because people don't want to hear right. anything right. about how. Because yeah. if you don't go to church, you ain't going to hear no preaching. <laughs> Right. I get it. I get it. Not but, to compare us to that. No, but you know what I'm saying. But when you're not being talked to about something, then you're less likely to mm -hmm. feel as bad when you mm -hmm. get off, get off on, you know, off plan, eat off yeah. plan. So huzzah to you guys that are still here and are going to continue to be here every Monday until Christmas. Yeah. And not wait till January 1 to be like, oh, I'll go back and listen yes. to Monday li not Please live Please don't now. wait till then. Just keep Just doing right. Here. Keep doing be right. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Maybe, JD. Yeah, okay, go for it. Uh, gout question continued. Yes, was on methylprednisolone a week and a half ago, which worked, but pain returned recently. Uh, if bad case of tendonitis, what can I do? So you may actually need to go see an orthopedic surgeon, JD, not for surgery. But uh, typically, podiatrists won't do a lot of inject, injection therapy, whereas orthopedic surgeons are much more likely to put a needle in that. And they can put some numbing medicine and, and a steroid right at the spot. And it's going to hurt, no doubt. But very often, just the, just the irritation of the needle going into that area stimulates more inflammation, which is good because that's the first step of the healing cascade. But then also putting some numbing medicine in there gives you verification that that's exactly where the pain's coming from, which is good diagnostic information. 
But then also if they put a little methylprednisolone or another steroid right in that spot, a lot of that way, you first of all, you're not getting the steroid through your whole entire body, which can cause damage. You're getting it right where you need it. And a lot of times that injection and maybe hopefully your podiatrist does that. If so, that'd be the next step. Jenny's foot is killing him. Etienne, welcome back. Hey, hey guys, trying to get back on the wagon, eating off on the road for work. It's been super hard. Hidden sugars and carbs are everywhere, yep. but getting creative with carnivore and eating out. Thank yep. you all so much for the help. Good. And Good it is more difficult to eat carnivore on the road, yeah. but it's not impossible. You can literally go to any Burger King, Wendy's, or McDonald's and get beef patties. Uh, they, they contain 100% beef and salt and pepper. That's literally the, the ingredients. They do not put any added crap in the in their burgers at those restaurants. Also, Five Guys, also what a burger is 100%. So wherever you are in the world, just go to a burger joint. But you and might even think, if you think it's not great beef, it's still better than the alternative. You know? uh, but uh, we get that argument in a lot. McDonald's is not real beef. Like, okay, well, then go somewhere that is real beef. Or just you can take like pre-meal prep hamburgers they yep. stay pretty good if you have a cooler at mm -hmm. you can take and just have some burger boiled eggs there, bacon and hamburger eggs. patties you can stack them up in your cooler mm -hmm. keep them cold and then in the in the pickled egg in the motel you can pop them in the, the microwave boom you're good uh wayne says hola abuela berry actually abuela is abuela solace <laughs> so I was, I, that's a good i'm glad you brought that up because granny berry is watching this from birmingham where she's staying with our parents there. And Nisha's abuel, abuela, abuelita, Pocho is watching this from her house just down the road. Who is 90 <clears throat> years old. So how old is Granny Berry? 92. And my abuela is 90. Yeah. And so, these women are not like sitting down, not doing anything. They're still up shaking their finger at us, telling yeah. us how to so do it. So you can say buenos <laughs> dias to uh, abuelita and... Hi, Granny Berry. Yeah. And tell us where you're watching from when you do that. Because Granny, and they love that. Oh, okay. Granny loves to see where you're oh, saying Oh, did we get from. that one? Uh, yeah, we did. Uh, we yes. did. Jerry, they say we need 4,000 milligrams of potassium per day. Again, I take no supplements mm -hmm. and I feel better than mm -hmm. I ever have. Mm -hmm. I eat OMAD, all yep. beef, and my wife is happier too. Yeah, okay. it's, it seems like potassium, like many other vitamins and minerals, if you're eating a high-carb inflammatory standard American diet, you probably need 4,000 milligrams a day. But, and when I first started talking about keto four years ago, four and a half. Six. Has it been that long? Well, because oh you were God. talking about it before you started to use I mean, when I started the, the doing Facebook lives and stuff, Five I would tell you, ago. you got to get 4,000 in every day. Yeah, that's, that's mandatory. <laughs> but it's like vitamin C. I know carnivores who haven't eaten a single fruit or berry in 10 years, their vitamin C level is still normal because there's a little bit of vitamin C in meat and also you need less. And I think potassium is that same way. If you're eating a very low carb, uninflammatory diet, I don't, I don't think you necessarily need that much potassium. Has anybody else noticed that you just don't need that many supplements on a carnivore diet? Tell me your story in the comments. Lauren lost about 25 pounds on keto ketovore with intermittent fasting. Is there a good way to know what weight we should aim to be at? Is BMI accurate? Or should we not aim for a goal weight? You you, I, you can kind of aim for a ballpark weight, like I'd like to weigh this. But the best measure, and I'm actually working on a video, BMI is terrible for using for one individual person. Now, for insurance companies to look at population-wide statistics, BMI is useful for that. But just talking about you, Lauren, BMI is worthless. If you're too tall, you're too short, you're, you're big bones, you hold more muscle, your BMI is going to be falsely high or low. Uh, I, t I like to look at waist to height ratio. So you measure your waist at the fattest part, the place you don't want to measure it at. That's where you measure it. Then you measure your height. You can do it either in both in centimeters or both in inches. And then you divide the waist by the height. And if it's, if it's close to 0.5 or less, you've reached your ideal body weight. Daniel Reyes lost 116 pounds on the carnivore diet. Daniel. What's up, Daniel? Huzzah! Oh, oh, you want to do it together? One, two, three. Huzzah! Oh, okay. Drink your, drink your we, mead. I've seen several people say, oh, we need a huzzah t-shirt. Yes, we need okay. a huzzah. Autumn, are you watching? David, carnivore, is it safe for renal failure three weeks 
uh, three times a week dialysis. Yeah. So if you're already on dialysis, you basically don't have any kidney function left. That's why you're on dialysis three times a week. So uh, yeah, carnivore diet is 100% safe for you because you're going to have dialysis. But what you might notice, David, as that because I know they check your blood work every so often, is that your 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 kidney function might actually become uh, change from non-existent to existent. And you might actually not have to have dialysis as often if you're on a carnivore diet religiously. Ed, Edmund, Edmund, Edmund here. What carbs do you recommend if you want to do low carb but not go into keto? Keto raises my LDL. Good question. Yeah, so I'm going to turn the drum. The off. fact that keto raises your LDL is not dangerous or bad. So just so you know that, I've got videos that explain that. Also, Dr. David Diamond has great videos that explain that. Uh, but if you're going to include some carbs, some people would say you need to add veg, like whole vegetables. That should be your carbs, but keep, keep account of the carbs. Other people would say you need to add fruit because, because the plants want you to eat the fruit. And I think there is something to be said for that argument, but you still need to keep your carbs under a certain count. Uh, for the vast majority of people that needs to be under 50 total grams of carbs a day. For many, many people, it needs to be under 20 total grams of carbs a day. But uh, some combination of fruit and berries, some nuts, maybe some fruit if you want to do that. Karen Martin blood sugar A1C in July was 14.6. Guess what it is now, guys? 5.4. Huzzah! Huzzah! Karen! Karen! All right! That's oh amazing. my damn it. That so is beautiful. And that's in how many months? Since July. Wow. Yeah, that's well amazing. Done. Well Good done. job. Uh, Christy, great seeing y'all yesterday. You yes. too. I was the giant turkey. Oh, buddy, we remember you. Well, thanks for all you do. I'm having a CIMT tomorrow. Hope results are good mm. uh, to stop doc insisting I need cholesterol medication due to my CAC score of 21. Yeah. And if you're in our, our private group, please share your results in the group because that, that helps us all. We can all look at that and talk about it, discuss it, and learn from it as a group. Thank you. Love it. And it was good to see you too. Yes. Thanks for coming. Ed, Dr. Barry, I found out that Element Citrus had too many carbs for me and I started holding water, otherwise carnivore. Any thoughts? There you go. I'm glad you discovered that. I think some people should avoid any flavored yeah. or sweetened anything. It's including got citric acid in it too. Some people yep. are sensitive to yep, that. Yep, yep, yep. And so uh, Element makes an unflavored one. And it might it, it might have not been too many carbs. It might have been that it bumped your insulin up too much because of the sweet taste. So I would try the unsweetened. Uh, Relight has unsweetened and so does Element. Uh, but you might just need to start making up your own uh, electrolyte yeah. powders that don't have any flavor whatsoever. You can make your own. We mm. have a recipe somewhere. It's yep. probably the longest video ever. We could have made it a five minute video. But that was back when we were new to this. We didn't know what we were we doing. We didn't know no better. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, Jason, uh, cold turkey statins and my cholesterol did go down. I was at 250, now at 88, but now I have stomach problems. Are stomach problems connected to nope. stopping a statin? No, you don't have to wean down statins at all. You can just pick up the bottle right now, wherever you're at in the world, and throw it in the garbage. There's no withdrawal. There's no stopping effects. It just, it, your body just basically thanks you for doing that. Edna says, what is a ketoboard diet? So if you missed it, I'm doing a ketoboard challenge in our private group. The link is in the description. Uh, short and sweet version, ketoboard is where you cut out most of your other sources of nutrition. Most of it, 80% is from meat. So you're like 80% carnivore, 20% other things. No products, limited sweeteners, limited yeah. dairy. Uh, the and obviously no grains or no sugar or no vegetable seed oils. That's not an option. Yeah. If it's not keto, then it's not ketobore, obviously. Right. Uh, and then ketobore for a lot of people is a transition into carnivore for 90 days to do an elimination diet. And then they transition back into ketobore knowing exactly what the 20% should be. Yep. Uh, that's just the short, sweet version. She has think. videos on her YouTube channel. You I can do. just search for Nisha on YouTube and you'll find them. I have a couple of videos about ketobore on this channel as well. I am the ketobore queen. You are. I mean, I just totally pulled that out of my butt. Nobody probably thinks that. <laughs> Mike, any recommendations for someone with a 100% ileocecal removal? removal and, okay, go 
sure. acid malabsorption. Low, lower fat helps, but I want to avoid the prescription binders if possible. Mike, I would try my best uh, because the ileocecal removal, the vast majority of fat and protein is broken down and absorbed higher up in the small intestine than the ileum. So you should be able to eat, you should be able to eat keto, ketovore, or carnivore. Uh, high fat shouldn't bother you at all. Uh, but I wouldn't try to convert to it overnight, Mike. I would over the next month or two, I would slowly increase the fat, slowly decrease the carbs. And I think you'll find that you can tolerate it just fine and your health benefits from it in many, many ways. Thank you, Christian. Yeah, somebody says we need a huzzah shirt. Yeah, yeah. Dalton, you're a blessing. Thank you. Could you explain a keto diet for me? I appreciate your response so much. Doc made my night and made me feel great. So just one more time. Uh, this is the short and sweet version. If you really want it broken down, I do have many videos on my channel on how to eat a keto board. This is my version. She's okay. got examples what I eat in a day. I have what I eat in a day, but I also have what is keto board uh, and 13 steps to starting keto board. So you can check those out. Mainly it's taking almost all, all products, um, just a limited amount of vegetables, certain vegetables, limited sweeteners, limited dairy. It's to really decrease that inflammation and increase your healing uh, and get you results in a more effective way. Yes. Uh, Lucy says my A1C is 5.9. Is this bad? So it's not terrible, Lucy, but it is uh, it's too high. You have prediabetes. OK, now, if you cut the carbohydrates from your daily diet and increase the fat and protein, Within three months, you'll have that 5.9 down to a 5.6 or even lower. And then that's normal. You don't have prediabetes anymore. Thank you, Philip, very much. Aw. Oh, my goodness. I just listened to you singing the rugged cross. My heart just melted. Such a magnificent. Thank you so much. Number one fan Appreciate said that, that too. Number one fan. Crazy Cajun. Just started carnivore almost 100% there. Just had a blood test. Should I continue or ask for other tests based on these results? Cholesterol 332, triglycerides 83, HDL 46, non HDL 286, VLDL uh, 17, LDL 293, glucose 92. Yeah, you need to get an A1C, a, a fasting insulin, and or a C peptide. Uh, and your cholesterol, I'm not worried about. Your triglycerides are beautiful. Your HDL could be a little higher. Increase the, the fatty meat a little more and start lifting heavy things, Crazy Cajun. That's going to help get that HDL up above 50 where we want it. But otherwise, you're doing good. I've been there. Okay, do we use any kind of animal fat? I wouldn't say any kind of animal fat. Uh, for sure, bacon fat is stored properly. That can be reused. Beef tallow, maybe for a, a 24 hour period. And if you drain it and strain it and you process it properly for yeah. longer than that in the refrigerator. Uh, duck fat, I'm not sure. Just you can Google how long can I keep? Yeah. Uh, and you'll fat. find many different answers. Yeah. Uh, my answer to that would be you don't want to know how long I've had a skillet back in my bachelor days that had bacon grease in it that literally I would cook every meal I ate in that same skillet with the same bacon grease for three weeks. We do that now. We cook heat and rule, not me. I use bacon fat, but I don't use beef towel like he does. He will cook ground beef. And he will use one skillet. And three days later, he's still using the same skillet that has not been cleaned. And the same leftover meat it's that still, I didn't finish. The, the seasoning's the same. Like it's, it's just the same skillet. Yep. yep. I'm not saying you should do that, but I'm saying hey, You learn as a bachelor, <laughs> if you don't like washing dishes, then don't wash dishes. Uh -huh. There's ways around that. The Whole Food Crusader. What? <laughs> causes thin poop on mm. keto Now, this could mean different things. So if by thin poop that you mean that it's skinny, skinny. like this, <laughs> then that's not from your diet. You need to go see your doctor and because that can be a sign that you may have a big polyp or even a tumor in your colon. It's called a decreasing caliber, and that's not okay. You've got to get that investigated. If you mean thin is in running. Money. Yeah, it could just be one of the fats you're using is not agreeing with you, or maybe your fat is a little too high. Maybe you left a skillet on the stove too, too many days. Maybe you ate something bad. Yeah, uh, could be many things, but it's probably nothing dangerous as long as it's not what he said. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Mo, thank you. Uh, Jamie Lee, my husband's doctor told him that our bodies only make a certain amount of insulin for a lifetime. <laughs> Is this true? Can you run out of insulin? Can you run Let out me take this opportunity to apologize 
as a doctor for all stupid doctors in the world who say things like this. This is moronic. No, your pancreas is more than capable of making an ungodly amount of insulin. And in fact, many people with type 2 diabetes, their pancreas does make an ungodly amount of insulin every single day. Now, there are some situations where an adult pancreas, they'll lose their beta cell function and develop LADA or type 1 diabetes even as an adult. That is a possible thing, but it's not because the pancreas just ran out of insulin. It was like, well, shit, we're out. Oh, well. No, 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 Jamie Lee. I'm not making fun of you, but I definitely am making fun of your doctor for saying that ignorant thing. Wow. Oh, wow. I'm just going to What's the anti? What's the opposite of huzzah? Because that's what that doctor needs. It's probably an expletive, isn't it? Uh, it's definitely four letters. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Sorry you had to deal with that. Uh, Austin, type 1 diabetic carnivore for 23 days now, down from 252 to 236. Yeah. Thank you. Any advice? Yeah. So very carefully be decreasing the insulin as you decrease the carbs. Uh, I don't want you to have a hypos. I also don't want your blood sugar to be 500 because you miscalculated, but you'll find also read Dr. Uh, Bernstein's book, The Diabetes Solution. Uh, I don't agree with everything he says, but he gives you excellent advice on how to slowly wean down your insulin usage. And you're not going to be able to stop your insulin, but you will wind up using 80 to 90 percent less insulin as a carnivore than you did when you were eating the ADA recommended diet. And you'll have a normal A1C. Bizarre noise it's that thing in there it doesn't um, i don't know tina thank you so much for the super chat dr barry my dad who's 82 has been sick with ibs and inflamed extensive diverticulosis losis um we have yep. the symptoms under control now yep. by eating beef butter and broth yep. he can't tol tolerate anything else it's only 95 pounds what can i do yep. to help him gain yep. weight so you it, yeah, this is the, you're in a, so at 82, it's really hard. It's hard. It's harder to put on muscle and to put on bone strength, which weighs something on the scale. Uh, just encourage him at every opportunity to be eating because it's really hard to gain fat on uh, beef, butter, and broth. It's virtually impossible. And so the more active you can get him, even if he has to walk with assistance right now. The more he walks, the more he he moves his muscles against resistance, he'll put on muscle. And you want him to put on muscle. If you love him and want to keep him around for many more years, he's got to put some muscle back on because he's too skinny. If he smokes, you got to deal with that because he's never been ever going to gain weight, including muscle, if he's a smoker at 82. Hope that helps. All right. Counting down, I think that is right. Opposite of huzzah is a traditional tongue out raspberry for as long as you can. I didn't want to do it towards the Yeah, camera. that would be gross. <laughs> I got spittle on the camera. Are you going to let me do that? Sorry, I can't God. see when your big hands in the way. Sorry. Mark. Hey, Mark. Is there any difference between metabolically between a lean cut and buttercream cheese versus a fatty cut? Um, I think a fatty, fattier cut's oh, with healthier. Cheese. Okay. I think it's tastier, but I absolutely think it's healthier to eat the fat that comes with the meat. Uh, the butter's fine. I don't know about the cream cheese. Some people find that that they can splurge on cream cheese and eat too much of it. Some people find it inflammatory. I find it freaking delicious, but I am a I'm a cheese addict. If I get into the cream cheese too much, I'll I'll be back in rehab again. Uh, somebody said, what f color drink is Nisha drinking? This is not color. It is water. Mineral. 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 Agua. Mineral. Mineral agua. Agua. Why can't I say that? <laughs> it's sparkling water. Mineral. Agua. <laughs> what is it? Where does it come? Mineral. It's a, agua. Is it I want to say mineral. Agua, but it's yeah. mineral. Mineral. Agua. agua. Uh, I don't know. Made in Mexico. Yeah. Packaged in El Paso, Texas. Oh, okay. So yeah, eat the meat, eat the fat that comes with the meat and, and cook it in butter, put butter on top, but watch out for that cream cheese. Hey, Jerry, thank you. Oh, get uh, Shelly right there. Where are you, yeah. Shelly? This one? Shelly, yeah. yes, yes, 100% you mm -hmm. can reverse non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which we're starting to call metabolic associated fatty liver disease because it comes from the food you've been eating. I've got four or five videos on this channel that will explain to you in detail how to reverse fatty liver disease. And in the show notes, I've got the research that I based the video on. So if your doctor 
argues with me, you can print out the research and take it to your doctor. But yes, 100% within, within six months, you can reverse your fatty liver completely. Can we get that one? Yeah, I couldn't see it. Stephen, RN, DC. Well, look at that word He's salad behind initials. your name. I love it. Bean carnivore, what are most patients LDL? And what are their largest small particles? Thank you so much. Love your information. So what I what I see, Stephen, is that about one third of people on a carnivore diet have no, uh, low normal LDL. About one third of people have a normal range LDL. And about one third of people have a very have a high LDL. And then about one or two percent of carnivores, we call them lean mass hyper responders, and they have super high LDLs. My last LDL check was two hundred and fifty, which I'm not worried about. Uh, now, most doctors don't order the NMR lipo profile, and so I don't know what their large and small particles are, but a lot of our tribe members in our private community do check the lipo profile, so they know their particle sizes, and we talk about that in the private group. Oh, I hate your computer. Cerner <laughs> I can't pronounce that. I'm sorry. My wife is pregnant 36 weeks. Congratulations. And has bacterial vaginosis. She's prescribed uh, antibiotic. Yep. How safe is that for her and baby? Are there any alternative treatments? Metronidazole, I think, is okay uh, for a short, just a short course during pregnancy. She's 36 weeks, so the baby's almost fully developed. Um, now, if it were early in the pregnancy, I, I'd be much more worried about the metronidazole. It's probably fine. Uh there's probably not any alternative treatments. If she's eating a high carb junk diet, then you could no say, shame hey, to her, just no shame. Right. But if she'll cut carbs. back on the carbs and the inflammatory, highly processed junk, then she probably won't get BV again. She's probably very uncomfortable. I would just, as yeah. the doctor prescribed it. They're not, I mean, yeah. OBs are very concerned about their babies. Okay. Absolutely. They're going to make yeah. sure that they're not giving the yeah. baby something that's going to cause a trauma. She's probably very uncomfortable. Let her take it. Um, take some probiotics too. And um, just get more excited about that baby. But the baby's almost here, man. Yeah, Are you're you almost ready? A dad. I hope you're ready. Is this your first baby? You got your stuff in order? No one does. So no. if you don't, it's okay. Like, don't She's feel right. bad. She's right. It's fine. It, they're, the babies are fine. They bounce. They're fine. <laughs> they're, they're built to be resilient. Billy the Kid, Lauren <clears throat> Carnivore is life changing. Y'all do it. Do Billy it. Is, Billy is right, even though he's a kid. That's right. Yeah. Amber, I have PCOS. Doctor wants to put me on birth control pills. What else can I do for PCOS? I don't know anything about it. So I've got a couple of videos about PCOS. I just made one the other day, uh, just a few days ago. I've got three or four videos about PCOS on this channel that will explain to you in detail what you need to do. Hint, taking birth control pills might decrease the symptoms of PCOS, but they in no way address the root cause. And they have a, a long list of potential uh devastating side effects so dr kiltz is in the house dr kiltz, dr. kiltz is, is a fertility house. specialist medical doctor and he says amoxicillin i agree I, I, I agree but i didn't want to second guess on live you know okay. on a live I go with feed, dr. but kiltz, yeah 100 amoxicillin trust is what i would have no. done for that but uh i don't i think at 36 weeks doc it's okay that they use the metronidazole since he said that, you could take that to your OB and say, hey, I would like to do moxicillin instead. Is that okay? And just run it by them. They're your probably not really going to Your doctor will love that. Don't worry. Oh, They'll yeah. be so happy that you <laughs> Speaking of Dr. Kills, if you were a, a lady of reproductive age and you have PCOS or any other infertility issues, go follow Dr. Kiltz. He's all over the place. K-I-L-T-Z. He's on YouTube. He's on Facebook. He's on Instagram. Uh, CNY Fertility. Is hey, he's on TikTok Kiltz. too, okay? He's on TikTok too. Yes, he is. I'm not. <laughs> he is. Dr. He Kiltz is, is on it. it. I think he goes live like every single yeah, day. He answers like five tons of questions. So if you're someone who has infertility or you're just wanting to get pregnant and you want to eat a carnivore type diet, he's a great source of information. We yep. love him. Yep. I did a Facebook live with him when I was pregnant with Beckett four, almost four years ago because yeah. I was early pregnant with him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and if you want to see him at his clinic, he's in New York. He is. You can see him. He takes patients. Oh, thank you. Hey, thank you very much. 
We're almost done. It's almost been an hour. That is time flies when you have yes, fun. Yes. Chow CEO. My feet start tingling when standing still, and I can't stand long. What could this be? My CAC score is 142. So I need to know what your A1C is and your fasting insulin and or C peptide. I need to know those numbers to be able to answer this more thoroughly. Uh, you might be pre-diabetic. You might be type 2 diabetic. Uh, you might have hyperinsulinemia. Any of those things can cause neuropathy. This could be coming from the lower back. It could be coming from the hip or it could be coming from the leg. But more than likely, it will improve as you continue to improve your metabolism by eating a lower and lower carbohydrate diet. Ian would love a video on MODY. Let me write that down. I've my, been, I've got some research on that. My whole family is misdiagnosed as type one and insulin dependent. My A1C went down to 5.0 with no meds following the PhD only. Well done, I, Ian. That's you haven't awesome. done one on that already? I have not because it's so rare. It is. It would All help right. like 400 people. Well, but those are 400 I to, people. I need to make that video. Lori, yeah. will this help? 100%. We've had ankylosing before. spondylitis. Yeah, we've had hundreds of people with AS say, hey, does this diet help this? Because it's so much better now. It's so much better that I don't I don't even take the infusions anymore. And I, it's like it's like it's gone. Uh, now, I know that after a certain point, AS gets so severe and the damage is so severe that you still can tell you got it, even if you don't have pain and stiffness. But yes, 100 percent, Lori, uh, if you're up for it, I would try 90 days of carnivore beef, butter, bacon and eggs and eat as much as you want. But don't eat anything else. Eat just beef, butter, bacon, and eggs for 90 days. And I think you'll be very happy with the outcome. Hey, we almost made it to 3,000 people tonight. I'm so proud of y'all. Yeah, in the, during the holiday season. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. Y'all are still here <clears throat> when the pressure is on and yes. the sugar is around and everybody's like, just eat it. Now, we're almost just done with this it. live, but if you've got questions that you need answers to, we have a private community where we go live an extra four times a week. And instead of almost 3,000 people throwing questions at us. There will be 50 or 100 or 200 people, and we can answer questions more completely and more thoroughly inside of our private community. There's a link down below that says join our private community. Click on that. It's anywhere from five bucks a month. You can give 5,000 bucks a month if you want to, but if five bucks a month gets you in the door and you've got a tribe of people I think it's 1,500 strong now. We've got mentors in there who've been doing this for a long damn time. They know the answer to every question. They can help you get started. And then if they're ever stumped by a question, they bump it up to us, and then you get your answer. For $5,000 a month, that dark Barry will come live with you. <laughs> I mean, maybe for a few days if you got bacon grease. Oh, God. Consider... Now that I've said that, somebody will do it. No, please don't do that. <laughs> Jerry uh, Omad, the gym before I break my fast or after, again, lost almost 30 pounds in three weeks, Beautiful. too. That's awesome. I want to recomposition mm. my body. Uh, yep. I have a two-week trip to Cuba in February. Oh, so nice. you got to be looking good when you get down to Cuba. So I would say if you still got lots of stored body fat, I would work out fasted. And then break your fast after you work out. If you're really close to your ideal body weight, <clears throat> then I think it's your choice. I usually go out and work on the farm, and that's my workout. I don't work out in a gym, but I always do that fasting. And I feel like it helps with body recomposition. I, help, I think it helps keep body fat percentage down. I think it help keep, helps keep bone stronger and lean mass up. And I think that's it kind of mimics the ancestral way of our ancestors. Because back then, if you didn't work, which AKA go out and kill something, then you didn't eat. So I think they always hunted in a fasted state, which was their working out. And so I think if we mimic that, I think we're going to get the benefits of, of that 3 million years of evolutionary advantage. Are they dating or related? Well, this is my cousin. we're from Tennessee. And so if we were cousins, <laughs> it would be okay. All right. So okay. get over that. We're married and we, we have are two married, kids. but we also date. We do. Each other. Not Lately, we've been pretty busy, but we do go on dates very often. And the other, Ugh. I'll just tell you, I'll tell you a little secret. I had, I, I, I caught her in the bathroom at a, oh, Abuelo's dear. house God, what do you think today. Time? And I jumped in there and shut the door and we had a little <clears throat> discussion right there in Abuelo's bathroom. Don't it tell was Abuelo. total PG high PG-13. School. Okay. Yeah, PG-13. Okay, PG yeah. 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 So this, this all you I guys, you need now. to date your woman. Even if you've been married for 415 years, you need to grab her by the hair and kiss her on the mouth and tell her to take her clothes off right now. Stop talking. 
Heck yeah, I'm going to go now. It's been an hour. If you want to keep going, you keep going. All right, guys. Join us in the network if you've got important questions you need to answer to. Thanks for joining us during the holiday seasons when you you know you don't want to hear this, but we appreciate you hanging out with us. We'll see you. We're to support you, not to preach at you. That's right. And thanks to our moderators for helping so many people in the comments tonight. You guys answering questions help people so much. We'll see you either tomorrow at 6 p.m. No, we're traveling, so we We won't be doing our our in-group lives tomorrow. Uh, We'll see you Wednesday at 11 a.m. in the group or... If you're not in the group, we'll see you next week. Link in description if you want to join. P.M. Central. Love you, Mina. Grab your woman by the hair and kiss her right on the mouth.